This is Volusia Today, a public information radio program brought to you by the County of Volusia. Here is your host, Kevin Captain. Good morning and welcome to Volusia Today. I'm Clayton Jackson and I'm joined by my co-host today, Pat Kewen. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Volusia Today is made possible by our sponsors, the Daytona Beach International Airport, the Ocean Center, Volusia Recycles, and Votran Public Transportation. So good morning, Pat, and how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, thank you. And um, driving up here from Port Orange this morning, I noticed the skies are a little bit less smoky, so that's good news for us. I, I agree. Like, <laughs> actually, I live in Port Orange as well, and I was driving in yesterday to work and I remember I just I yawned and I got a little whiff of smoke all of a sudden I had a cough for a second so but I did not experience that today so you're right it looks like the smoke is clearing up and to kind of go along with that topic we have two very knowledgeable people regarding the world of fire services and we are very excited to get in with them we have on uh, the show today we have Julie Allen a public information officer for the Florida Forest Service and we have Chief Smoke, that is a beautiful name for, <laughs> for a fire service, um, with the Volusia County Fire Rescue. Um, so before we get into everything, um, Julie, we'll start with you. So we've been working a little bit together. Um, it's been a little uh, hectic lately with the fires going on. And keep hearing acronyms, FFS, you know, it was called FFS. You know, they had a command on this. So... Tell us what FFS, FFS is and what you guys do. So we are the Florida Forest Service. Uh, several years ago, we were uh, called the Division of Forestry, so it's super easy for everybody to just say DOF. And our amazing dispatchers uh, with Volusia County always there, oh, it's DOF, it's DOF. But we are now the Florida Forest Service. Uh, we, as an agency, we manage 1.1 million acres of land uh, for multiple uses uh, to include timber, uh, recreation, and uh, other you know, wildlife habitat. So uh, that's what we are as an agency, but as the lead agency in wildfire response, we cover all of the wildfires, uh, burn permitting, and things of that nature. Oh, wow. Well, Pat? Hey, and I hear that next week is Wildfire Awareness Week. So what's that all about? So Wildfire Awareness Week was actually uh, developed after the uh, 98 wildfires. And uh, this year will be the uh, 25th commemoration of uh, those devastating wildfires that we had here in uh, Florida uh, that scorched several million acres. Um, so it just is a reminder to residents of Florida. And, uh, you know, in the last several years, we had a tremendous influx of people that have moved to our beautiful state. Uh, it's just a reminder that we do have wildfires here, um, so it's just an educational purpose, and we uh, celebrate by providing all kinds of information about wildfires, how you can protect your home, your communities, and be prepared for a wildfire. Oh, very good. So wildfires, armadillos, and bears. I'm a K Kentucky native, and I moved here in 2016, <laughs> And those are three things that I was not aware that Florida has. So um, armadillos aren't as scary as wildfires and <laughs> bears, but that when I guess in our perception, we always think wildfires, we hear out west, all those, so forth. But you know, it's great. And what type of awareness events does the service plan on doing next week? So it'll definitely be where we reach out to our community, our community partners, such as Volusia County Fire Services. Uh, we can provide talks to communities, uh, homeowners association groups. We'll be visiting some schools in the area to talk to kids about wildfires and how they can talk to their parents about wildfires and have a plan for their family in the event that there is a wildfire. And will there be any posts on social media, like tips and so forth? Um, so we always want to encourage the listeners and viewers that to check out the FFS, the Facebook and Instagram and so forth, to find those those tips and tricks as well. Sure. There will be a, a big social campaign uh, that we will talk about wildfires, uh, wildfire preparedness. We'll include some smoky Bear stuff, because remember, only you can prevent wildfires. So we'll have some information on our social media site. Oh, wonderful and wonderful. So, again, I said it's been a little exciting here lately the last couple of weeks. And 
there are actually some ongoing wildfires right now. So what are you going to tell us a little bit about those and what the status of they of them sure uh currently we have nine active wildfires here in volusia county um the, the the larger of them all is the double gate fire which is close to tiger bay state forest um that one uh last night they ca- uh it is deemed 100 percent contained uh at 1901 acres um the other ones are uh the pinewood fire which is close to that fire as well that one is also 100 percent contained at 111 acres all of our wildfires that we have in volusia county are 100 percent contained now oh that's great now I, i'm a veteran of the 1998 wildfires of course i wasn't a firefighter but i lived through it and all the ash falling on our cars and it felt like the entire county was on fire and we we even had to evacuate flagler county so do you think we might be seeing a repeat of that? I don't think that we'll see a repeat of the 98 wildfires. There's been you know, so much uh, development here in Volusia County and Flagler County as well. We don't have that urban interface. That's where the woods meets the back of the homes or communities. So I don't think that we'll see devastation like we did then because of uh, development, but also because of the efforts of uh, fire prevention and mitigation. Uh, Scott and I have the incredible opportunity to work together on a lot of projects and programs where we have gone into communities and reduced their wildfire risks. Right. I know you've been doing a lot more prescribed burns and and that's a that's a great thing absolutely there would be you know florida leads the nation in the amount of successful prescribed burns that are conducted and that plays such a huge role in the reduction of devastating wildfires here in florida oh good for you all right so kind of go back to when you said all the the wildfires have been contained yes so does that mean that the wildfires are completely extinguished, that they are, that there's no more burn or? No, when we talk about containment, we talk about, we use dozer plow units in suppression of wildfires. So those dozers are plowing containment lines around the fire. So when we say it's 25% contained, that means that those dozers have got 25%, 20, you know, lines around 25% of the fire. So when they're 100% contained, that means that we've got a line all the way around the fire. And, you know, while they're working on containment, there are other dozer plow units on that fire as well that are improving those lines. They're widening those lines, creating like a super highway around the fire to stop the forward progression of the fire hmm so the, but when we talk about controlled when we say it's controlled that means it's dead out there's no smoke there's no active flame it is out so just out of curiosity once it, you have deemed it 100 percent contained about how long does it take for like you said to be controlled like or like actually extinguished just well that really depends um where this fire where the double gate fire is we did uh, a lot of prescribed burning on our forest so once it hit where we conducted that prescribed burn or those prescribed burns on the forest it stopped the progression of the fire because the fuels were reduced when we talk about fuels we're talking about hazardous dry dead vegetation so once it hits that area where a prescribed burn was conducted it slows the progression and then once it hits that containment line it stops the progression so our crews are going to be out there weeks several weeks um, they're going to be working on what we consider mop-up operations that's where you know we're getting assistance from our partners with volusia county fire where we're turning the stumps over we're spraying a lot of water out there again improving those containment lines until there's no smoke showing no active flame or anything like that Oh, good. Now, do you have some safety tips for people, how they can uh, prevent wildfires from getting to their homes and what they can do to uh, actually prevent wildfires in the first place? Well, um, fires are going to happen here in Florida. Um, And Florida is a fire-dependent ecosystem, so Mm -hmm. fires are naturally happen in Florida. So before there were homes and businesses and all of the amazing amenities that we have here in Florida, it would 
uh, every year would burn. And so in, in every three to five years, it would burn all the way across the state. You know, we have those afternoon lightning storms. Um, so the ecosystem here depends on that fire to thrive. It reduces um, cluster of fuels, hazardous fuels, it reduces that. So what we um, encourage communities to do is have a plan for your community, number one, in the event that there's a wildfire, uh, whether it's evacuation or things of that nature, just have a plan for your family. The other thing we tell people is have have that defensible space behind your home so if you have that urban interface or where you know you have woods behind your home we encourage communities to have 30 to 50 feet of defensible space behind their homes uh, so in the event that a wildfire does happen in that area uh, it stops the forward progression all right so we're going to take a quick break but stick around for more volusia today get ready it's time for another volusia county fire rescue fire safety tip Hey kids, safety in the kitchen is important for you too. So mom and dad, when you're in the kitchen cooking, make sure you create a three foot safety zone around the stove top to keep the children safe too. Go to volusia.org and check out the virtual classroom. It's made for kids, it's awesome, very informative, and it's fun. Check it out at volusia.org. Practicing good fire safety habits save lives. Get ready, it's time for another Volusia County Fire Rescue Fire Safety Tip. Here's some quick tips for fire safety in the kitchen. Never leave your cooking pots unattended. Have a pot lid nearby while you're cooking. If you do have a fire, never put water on it. Put your lid on, take it off the heat, turn your burner off. Go to volusia.org and check out the virtual classroom. It's made for kids, it's awesome, very informative, and it's fun. Check it out at volusia.org. Practicing good fire safety habits saves lives. Get ready, it's time for another Volusia County Fire Rescue Fire Safety Tip. Another good tip for the kitchen is safety for the children. We want to create a three foot zone of safety around the stovetop so that children can't access and get burned. We're back. I'm Pat Kewen along with Clay Jackson and you're listening to Volusia Today. This is a public information program brought to you by the County of Volusia. Our next guest is Scott Smoke, who has an interesting last name. He's the battalion chief with Volusia County Fire Rescue, and he specializes in wildfires. So good morning, Scott. Uh, let's start off with what Volusia County Fire Rescue can offer to residents besides fire safety. Well, for our fire safe for fire service, we, we not only do the fire rescue you know, throughout the county, but we also provide educational um, opportunities. We'll go to schools, we'll go to different community events and just talk about fire safety. We'll talk about what firefighters do. Uh, we'll show off all our equipment. Everybody loves a big red fire truck. And uh, so, you know, we like to show that kind of stuff off and talk about and just have that community involvement with everybody that we, that we deal with on an everyday basis. Very good. Now, we just talked with Julie about the current wildfires. And uh, can you give us some tips about what residents can do to prevent wildfires things like uh, outdoor burning and not throwing your cigarettes out the window yeah so with outdoor burning we want to make sure that people you know burn it like they're supposed to and you know we do have ordinances and we do have regulations and setbacks that people have to abide by and you know basically any type of outdoor burning we just want people to burn vegetative material only so if they're doing land debris clearing at their house you know cleaning up their yard tree trimming things like that that's the things that they can they can burn no outdoor burning involves garbage or you know recycling material of any sort they don't want to burn that kind of stuff the other thing they can do is just make sure they keep their their yard and their property manicured and, and safe and mowed down keep the grass mowed down keep the trees trimmed up keep the trees trimmed away from their houses keep their roofs clean from all the leaves that fall you know it's that time of year now where the oaks are getting ready to start you know have dropped all their leaves so there's a lot of accumulation of oak leaves and pine needles and so we just encourage people to clean their roofs clean their gutters clean up around their house so all that kind of stuff doesn't burn up along the side of their house keep it nice and clean right my brother just visited me from arizona and he had a good laugh when he saw that i had weeds growing out of my gutter <laughs> so I, I got up on the ladder <laughs> yeah 
So what you're saying is when my wife comes back from a BJ's or Sam's Club hall with a bunch of cereal boxes, chip boxes, and so forth for the kids, I probably shouldn't go out in my backyard and throw them in a barrel and light them on fire? No, nope, nope. definitely <laughs> not. Those definitely put into the regular trash hold uh, dispensing or recycling if you have that available at your at your house. All right, I just, just want to reiterate that for some <laughs> of our listeners because yes. I do hear of that happening it sometimes. It does happen often. Um, so say somebody would like to get a, a permit to burn stuff. How should they go about doing that? Well, here in Volusia County, anybody can burn on their property as long as they meet the regulations and the setbacks, as long as that pile or the area that they're burning is less than eight feet in diameter. Anything that's larger than eight feet in diameter, they have to call the Florida Forest Service and um, get an authorization burn to burn. Um, so four to four service handles anything larger than eight feet in diameter, anything smaller than eight feet in diameter in size, they can do it as long as they meet the certain setbacks and requirements that are that they're allowed to burn. And would they contact your office directly? No, to- actually, they don't have to contact us for a burn permit if it's smaller than eight feet, as long as they meet the, the regulations. And they can go into our website, and it's all on there in reference to what the setbacks are. They have to be so far away from a road, their house, other houses woods things like that so smaller than eight feet that's fine that's fine larger than eight feet they need to call julie's team at the ffs most definitely all right that's good that's good now at some point this summer uh it's possible that we might issue a a burn ban and i'm wondering uh, how dry do things have to get before you declare a a burn ban here in Volusia County? Well, historically what we've done is when the KBDI, which is a drought index that we go by, that's been, that is monitored, um, usually when that hits around 500 or a little over 500, historically that's what we have done in the county. Uh, as As an average for the county right now, we're not there. Now there are certain parts of the county that are over 500 in reference to that drought index, but as an average, we are not there at the moment. So we are, we, look at this every day we have communications and talked with florida forest service every day about that kind of stuff and and make recommendations and ultimately when that comes up then there will be more discussions with the fire chief and other administrative uh, people in the county to make that decision when they're going to issue that burn ban okay i get it now where are the driest parts of the county um as of right now the driest parts are usually um when I looked at it earlier today, the driest parts are in this, the southern part of the county um, and also on the southern west and the western part of our county. So, you know, De Leon Springs, DeLand, Orange City, Oak Hill, Osteen, uh, the southern part of New Smyrna area, Edgewater, those are the driest areas that we have right now in our county. Oh, thank you. All right, so we had a red flag warning a few weeks ago. I think a lot of people understand about the flag warning and so forth, and they visit our beaches, they understand the different levels, um, the dangers associated with, but what is a red flag warning in the fire world? Well, there's actually two different types of red flag warnings. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, one of them is issued by the National Weather Service uh, based on certain conditions, you know, humidity, percentage, winds. Um, and temperature and then there's another red flag that actually the Florida Forest Service issues based on other things and I can actually turn that over to Julie because she could actually explain that a lot better than I could in reference to what a red flag is. Sure so the Florida Forest Service would issue uh, a red flag fire alert so and and that really depends on different uh different levels so we're talking about lack of rain we're talking about the drought index we're talking about resource availability uh personnel availability uh there it's just something you know different levels of where we would uh issue a red flag fire alert not to be confused with a red flag warning which is issued by the national weather service and does that post it like how are citizens informed of when a red flag ha- warning has or watch has been issued uh the red flag fire alert or the Far- red flag both the one them. that the national weather service both so them, the right? national weather service would put that information out and uh scott would would share that information mm-hmm. with residents of volusia county in the event that we issued a red flag fire alert we would definitely uh share that with our partnering agencies we would contact our media through a press release through social media and things of that nature yes oh, wonderful 
Okay, now we, we already talked about fire tips for residents. Uh, we have them also posted up at volusia.org slash fire. And also on there, there's a map of fire hydrants and fire stations. And Scott, I'm wondering, is that just for Volusia County Fire Rescue, or does that include city fire departments as well? As for the hydrants, that's yes. every hydrant that's in Volusia County, no matter if it's in the county jurisdictional area or if it's in the city jurisdictional area, those are all hydrants. The locations of the fire stations are those of Volusia County fire stations themselves. Um, if they want to know where their fire station is in the different cities, they can go to those uh, city websites and find those locations of that. Okay. And, and which areas does the Volusia County Fire Rescue provide service for? Anywhere that's considered the unincorporated area of the county. Um, but we also have agreements with every city in the Volusia County that we respond to um, any calls. Basically, it's called the closest unit response un agreement. So no matter where the, the emergency is located at, the closest fire truck and the closest uh, first responder unit is going to go to that location, no matter what jurisdiction it's in. Oh, that's great. Good. So we're definitely, we definitely help each other out all the time. All right. Well, before we take a, another break, how, I just wonder, how do you, how do the different agencies collaborate? Like, for example, if there, we understand that there's a fire that's broke out with the wildfire, how do y'all collaborate of, you know, who makes the phone call, who says, you know, we are in command, you know, we have jurisdiction, or we need your support, or no, we, we you know, we can handle this. How, how do, as FFS and, you know, Bush of Fire, how do y'all collaborate together? Well, usually um, it comes in through the 911 system. Someone calls 911, comes into our dispatch center. We, when I say we, the f fire service, Volusia County Fire Service or the city or whatever, usually is the first one to get notified of that. And then we make the notification to forestry. Now forestry, there are times where people call forestry directly and then they, then they will call us for assistance. But when we get to wildfire, I mean, for us as, as a fire rescue service agency, our thing is to protect life property and, and homes and you know structures. And then of course forestry will come in there and they will contain the fire and try to control it as best as they can. So we work really well on that part of it. And in reference to when we get on scene, it's kind of a, what we call a unified command. Um, we work together, we make tactical decisions together, we discuss things back and forth, and uh, we set those different operational needs up as based on what the situation is at that time. All right, wonderful. All right, so we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back in a few minutes, thank you. Get ready, it's time for another Volusia County Fire Rescue Fire Safety Tip. Here's some quick tips for fire safety in the kitchen. Never leave your cooking pots unattended. Have a pot lid nearby while you're cooking. If you do have a fire, never put water on it. Put your lid on, take it off the heat, turn your burner off. Go to volusia.org and check out the virtual classroom. It's made for kids, it's awesome, very informative, and it's fun. Check it out at volusia.org. Practicing good fire safety habits saves lives. Get ready, it's time for another Volusia County Fire Rescue Fire Safety Tip. Another good tip for the kitchen is safety for the children. We want to create a three foot zone of safety around the stove top so that children can't access and get burned. We're back. I'm Clayton Jackson with Pat Kuhn and you're listening to Volusia Today, a public information program brought to you by the County of Volusia. And thank you so much for tuning in this morning. So uh, before we wrap up things, um, I want to circle back to the burn regulation and ordinances. So, Chief Smoke, again, I love that name, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Julie, do is this the FFS, do you all have similar, different, comparable burn ordinances and regulations that Chief Smoke was talking about earlier? Right. So, we do have some regulations. Uh, as Scott said, if it's over eight feet, um, we do require that they call to get a burn permit. Um, each day we set the regulations for the day, uh, whether they can burn or not. And that would depend on weather conditions if we issue permits. It also depends on whether you are a, you are a certified burner or a non-certified burner. So we do have pretty much the same regulations. It needs to be so many feet from a structure, so many feet from the roadway, and things of that nature. Right. Now, is there any cost associated with getting a permit or? No. 
there's no cost associated with it we just will send somebody out to do what we call an on-site inspection we'll send a ranger out they'll inspect the pile make sure that there's no um, household materials which is illegal to burn mm -hmm. in the state of Florida mm -hmm. so we want to make sure that there's no household or construction items in that pile they'll do the inspection and um, say whether or not they're able to burn and let's start one more so if they want to burn something is if they wake up that morning and say i think i want i need to burn something can they get it done that day or is there like typically, a two or three day turnaround no like how? typically that we uh, we can send a ranger out that day that morning however right now because we're responding to so many wildfires it may be later in the day a couple of days it really just depends so we'll, we'll be be prepared and look in advance just be on the safe Absolutely. side be planning Absolutely. to burn and are there penalties for people who burn without a permit? There is. They're issued um, a what we call a notice of violation or an NOV. They are issued that if they receive multiple notice of violations, then we will turn that over to the Office of Agricultural Law Enforcement. Oh, okay. Now, have there been instances where a personal burn on, on one person's property has exploded and uh, created a, a large wildfire? Unfortunately, that is. It, we consider that an escaped burn, mm -hmm. and uh, that is actually, during this time of year, it's actually one of the leading causes of wildfires. Oh, my. Now, um, I, I've been to a few of these fire command centers. It, it's been a few years, but I, I was there at the Iron Horse fire down in southwest southeast volusia it must be about 10 years ago and go now 2011. oh okay and um it, it's really impressive these guys work together like the army you know they're really on top of things they have a good command structure and um i, I could see that we're in safe hands there all right so you know, kind of wrapping up things here if somebody wanted to join the field, like work for in the fire departments, the FFS, how would they go about applying? And what would be, obviously you all are very passionate about, but how would they go about doing so? So for the Florida Forest Service, uh, you can go to uh, People First. It's a, a website where you can apply uh, to be a, a ranger, a wildland firefighter with our agency. We provide all of the training uniforms uh, at no cost to our uh, new recruits. And Chief Smoke? And for us, you, you actually have to go through and get a certification through the state of Florida. It's a firefighter compliance cert certification, and you have to get your EMT certification um, by, from the state of Florida. And then you can apply with us on the volusia.org um, website for... Uh, employment and then we'll go through a hiring process on that part of it awesome that's wonderful news well in closing we want to thank our guests our guests scott and julie and we want to thank you for listening to volusia today a public information radio program brought to you to county volusia i'm clayton jackson have a wonderful day volusia county If you have a comment about Volusia Today, or if there is a topic you would like to hear featured, please contact Volusia County Community Information at 1-866-345-0345.